Today's conversation is sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you're an accredited investor and you want to find out more about investment opportunities, go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest. I started investing in real estate in my own backyard. The first deal I ever bought was an eight unit property. It was probably 20 minutes away from my house. And yeah, I mean, I could say that that's long. It wasn't on my street. And as I learned, it was like, wait a minute, most of my most successful clients were either not local or they were international. I mean, literally international. I'm like, well, how are they doing it? You're listening to the Going Long Podcast with Billy Keels, the number one podcast for long distance real asset investing. Welcome to the Going Long Podcast. We're back once again to continue to help to educate you so that you feel much more comfortable as well as confident investing beyond your backyard. And yes, I am your host, Billy Keels, and I am over the top excited about today's conversation. I cannot wait for you to hear this one. This is one that just already take out pencil, take out a piece of paper or your iPad or whatever you do, because you're going to want to take notes on this one. This was a pretty, pretty amazing conversation uh, with someone who is is making a lot of positive impact on, on people. So, But before we get to there, I am just, I cannot thank you so much. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so very much. Uh, The podcast continues to move up the charts. You continue to not only listen, you download and you are taking action on the information that you're receiving. Appreciate that, which means that we're continuing to give you what it is that you're looking for so that you can move further and faster. Also, many of you are taking the time to even leave an honest written review, and that's phenomenal because that means that we can adapt and change and give you more of what you want. If you've done that, thank you so very much. So many of you have already done that, uh, especially on the Apple Podcast platform. If you've not done that yet and you really want to let me know what you think, the things that are going really well, the things that you want to see change, the guests that you want to see on the on the show, just go to the little link that we have here in the that you'll see on your iPhone or whatever. Just go to your there's like a very short little video for those of you that are on the I, Apple podcast platform and it will tell you exactly what you need to do. That way we can get your honest written review as well as rating and we can continue to provide you exactly what you're needing to be able to take more action. So the other thing is I know you want to check out every single episode that has ever like you want to just binge and listen to all the episodes or you want to go back to find one of your favorite episodes and it's not on your favorite podcast platform. Just go to billykeels.com. When you get there, the screen's going to change really quickly and then you're going to see a tab that says podcasts. There you can find every single podcast. Go there and you can find every single one that you've ever wanted to listen to. And then lastly, for those of you that want to connect with other accredited investors, listen, a lot of people, if you're listening to this and you are a high wage earner, you are getting crushed in W-2 taxes because you are paying lots of taxes. Even though you're invested in real estate, that's one thing that's passive. But if you're actively, uh, if you have active income, W-2 income, and you want to be able to keep some more of that rather than make more of it, keep more of it, Really, it's going to be interesting for you to connect with us at the Accredited Investor Club. Just send me an email to aiclub at billykeels.com. You and I will be in touch, tell you more about it. Uh, But this is something that is, I think it's specifically there. Well, it's just connect with a lot of people. At the same time, there are some very specific things that we're doing for accredited investors uh, that will help you. So aiclub at billykeels.com. Love looking forward to speaking with you. And then here's the thing, like today's conversation just the mic drops multiple times. Uh, If you are someone who is interested in up leveling your game, if you are someone who is a busy professional and you know that you want to have more control over the outcomes of your life, if you are someone who maybe you're in your role right now and you think maybe this is not the right place for me, you're just looking for more direction and someone who's actually gone out and done it, like this is the conversation that you really are going to want to listen to because uh, today's guest really shares a lot about also helping you understand the importance of mindset, mind, mindset expansion, and how that all ties into investing. So you're really going to enjoy today's conversation with Tyler Chesser, and we're going to get to that conversation just after this. Are you a busy, high-paid professional, someone who's made $200,000 the previous two years and also expected to earn $200,000 this year? Or maybe as a couple, you filed jointly and you've earned $300,000 the previous two years and also expected to earn $300,000 together this year. Or maybe yourself or as a couple, you have a million dollars in net worth, not including your home, 
Well, if you meet any of those criteria, then the IRS considers you to be someone who is an accredited investor. And so that probably means you're a top producing software sales executive, or maybe you're a highly paid consultant. Maybe you're a lawyer, maybe you're a doctor or, or a business owner. You may even work for a professional sports franchise. But one way or the other, you've done a lot of really hard work to get to where you are. You've done 100% of the work. And nowadays you're continuing to get crushed by taxes. And that means you're only bringing home 50% of the reward. If you're tired of doing this over and over and you're looking for a solution to start to keep more of your money, you can go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest so that you can start to keep more of your money, which means that you can start to have the freedom to choose what you want to do, when you want to do it, with whom you want to do it. So once again, go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest to see how we can start to help you today. Once again, that's firstgencp.com forward slash invest. So if you're ready to go big and elevate your life, as well as your long distance investing success, then guess what? Today's the conversation you're gonna to wanna to listen to until the very, very, very last word, I promise. You know why? Because today's guest not only began his career in sales in the retail and direct sales space, he also then went and worked diplomatically with the Middle East as well as Asia in the areas of marketing, brand production, as well as development. That sounds awesome. From there, he tr transitioned into the commercial real estate space where he took really a counselor-like approach and helped to focus investors, not just nationally, but also internationally. And from there, continued to get more success. And in 2019, he went on to found the Chesser Companies as well as the Elevate Podcast. And you know what? This podcast is amazing. It's all about mindset, mindset expansion, as well as personal development. And you absolutely need to check it out because now, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to today's conversation, the co-founder and the managing partner of CCF Capital, Mr. Tyler Chesser. Tyler, welcome to the show, man. Billy, are you kidding me right now with this like intro? I'm like, wow. I was like, all right, I'm settled in. This is no problem. I'm hanging out with my friend. Now I'm like nervous. I'm like, look at this guy. This is what? incredible. <laughs> Don't even get nervous. Listen, everybody, I'm just going to warn you today. Tyler, he just, he brings the A game every single time. No pressure, of course. And just amazing. Really looking forward to today's conversation because I know everyone's going to leave with an elevated sense of how they can go out and accomplish things, understanding what they should be doing, why they should be doing it. And, um, and yeah, I'm really looking forward to the conversation. So we're, we're both a little bit nervous and a little nervous energy always is great. So, hey, you know, we're good. <laughs> I think so, man. You know what it does? It pushes you into action, right? When you get a little bit nervous, it's like, okay, well then, you know, I, there could be a misstep, but let's make sure we get ahead. And I there just admire the way that you prepare for the conversation and you're willing to be present with me. And so, man, I, I, I told you this right before we got started. It was like, when we first met, it was like, wait a minute, we've known each other for like 500 years. We've been <laughs> friends in many other lives or something because man, it's just, it's great to be with you. You have a serving heart, a serving energy. And you're an incredible human being, man. So this is phenomenal. And I can't wait for this conversation. All right. So this is going to be, this is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. And by the way, everybody go check out Elevate Podcast. I'll just put it out there right now. Tyler's amazing host. Um, he hosted me at, on his show, 253. Check it out. He's got so many amazing guests and uh, just really brings the game. So anyway, here's the thing, Tyler. As you know, we talked about this. Everybody's going to get the same five questions. And because today you're our special guest, you are going to get the same. You're going to get two in the beginning. You're going to get three in the end. Uh, but the thing is, in the middle, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to ask you. So, but I know you'll be up for the for, <laughs> up for the question, whatever it is. But the very first thing I'd love for you to know is, or I'd love for the going along family to know is, wh where do you live in the U.S.? I live in Louisville, Kentucky, right? Smack dab in the middle, not completely in the middle, but a little bit on the Eastern side of the U S but not too far from where you're from in Columbus, Ohio. So I'm sure you're familiar with Louisville. Very, very, very familiar. So I appreciate that. And then the other question that I, I just got to get off of my heart now is what is the most positive thing that's happened to you in the last 24 hours, Tyler? I love this question. The, the most positive thing that's happened to me is, so we have three, three, three and a half month uh, twins and both of them smiled at me within the last 24 hours. So that's been phenomenal. I mean, that's been like a new development for us over the past <laughs> couple of weeks. And it's just like, there's nothing better, man. Those moments are absolutely epic. And when the fact that you just recognize the smiles, the simple smiles, it's something that can make such a positive impact and go with you for so many hours, days. And I appreciate you sharing that with me. Um, I, I 
do you, are you okay with me admitting something to you? Please. Um, here's the thing, Tyler. I kind of, every single week, every single conversation, I give myself this really impossible task. Like it's trying to tell your story in like two and a half seconds in an intro. <laughs> I know it's, it's really impossible, but I like to keep the bar high. And the thing is everybody forgives me and, and hopefully you'll forgive me for trying to put it into two and, two and a half seconds. But more importantly, if you could help me. And, and the thing is, I would love for you to tell me and tell the Going Long family your own story, your own backstory in your own words. And also if you could help me a little bit, if you could maybe highlight some of the major decisions that you've made along the way, that would be extremely helpful. And then when you get to today, then we'll see where you and I take the conversation and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you. And I appreciate you taking a stab at take, you know, telling my story. <laughs> I thought you did a great job, first of all. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about my story. You know, I'll, you know, I'll start really from after college because when I went to college, I was always taught and I, I never questioned this thought, go to school, get good grades, and go and get a good job, right? And when you get a good job, you know, make sure you put money away in the 401k and you grow that nest egg and continue to ride that ladder. You know, I was always, I always thought of myself as sort of a corporate executive at some point in my future. I always see, you know, I always kind of saw myself in the corner office and I didn't really know anything different. I mean, I grew up in a middle-class family, um, you know, not, not blue collar, but, um, but definitely not sort of entrepreneurial and that kind of stuff. And so I never thought of anything different other than going down that path. I was fascinated with the psychology of business. I was fascinated with, you know, why people associated value with certain brands. I mean, growing up, like you and I are big basketball fans. I thought Nike was the most unbelievable thing in the world. Like I, I and so thinking back to it, when I was beginning my professional career, I was like, wow, that's so fascinating. The level of value that I placed to Nike as an example. And, and I remember in my interview, you mentioned, you know, starting in, in uh, marketing, they asked me what my dream job was. And I said, my dream job is to be the brand manager of Nike because I thought that was just phenomenal. I thought that was just the pinnacle of the marketing world. And so anyway, as I got started as a marketing, uh, I kind of started as a digital marketing uh, associate. I climbed the ladder. I started doing market research. Um, I was doing international marketing, as you mentioned. You know, we were opening locations in the Middle East in Asia and Eastern Europe and uh, South America. We were so we were working with franchisees all across the world, and it was phenomenal. It was amazing because different cultures associated different values with that brand. And so to me, it was like, man, I was really scratching my itch in terms of my intellectual um, interest in this space. But as I was climbing that ladder, I kind of looked around. And I was like, wow, you know, I, I'm, I'm committed. I'm dedicated. I'm, I want to be more and more valuable. And, you know, it was like, well, you know, I wonder when I'm going to get my next promotion. You know, I was always thinking about that. When am I going to get my next promotion? What's going to be my next raise? And it was interesting because I bought a house during that time as well. And as we all know, when you own real estate, there's this little thing called maintenance, repairs and maintenance. And, uh, you know, these, uh, th these little things that I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't aware of at all, uh, as a, as a homeowner, as a new homeowner. And of course, every problem, you know, you could have imagined happened to, to that house that I bought. I mean, it was a house built probably in the 70s, I believe it was in the mm -hmm. 70s. And so, you know, there was just a lot of different things where, whether it was a, a pipe in the front yard that had to be dug up, that had to be, you know, fixed and, you know, another one, by the way, under the garage uh, that we had to jackhammer up, um, you know, we had a tree root that grew into, uh, you know, the the main electric line coming in. So we had to <laughs> understand what was that. Oh, by the way, we had a beehive that was uh, that was, you know, in the side of the house. So that was like, wow. wait a minute, what's going on? So anyway, I tell you that because all of these challenges pushed me into a bit of a pressurized financial position because it was mm -hmm. like, man, it was like one thing after another. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, I'm still, I'm paying my bills and all these kind of things. And so I'm looking around in the organization saying, all right, I'm more and more dedicated. I'm doing conference calls at 11 PM because in Philippines it's 11 AM, right? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm doing these things because that's what's right for our partners. That's what's right for the people that we're serving. It's not right for us to always ask for them to do it on those off hours as well. And so, you know, I looked around and, you know, my colleagues, most of which were not in the international marketing space, I was kind of handling that. I would come in, you know, call it 9.05, 9, 10 a.m. after, by the way, doing, you know, late night conference calls the night before. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting these little snickers and sneers about like, oh, you know, a little bit late, huh? You know, a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, and it was like, oh, that kind of like ate at me. It was like, what do you mean? Like I was so committed. 
And so I, you know, long story short, I kind of looked around. I was like, you know, it feels very political in this space. Mm -hmm. It feels very, you know, how long have you been in the seat before you're going to get that next raise? And of course I was getting the cost of living raises and here and there getting something a little bit better, but ultimately I didn't have financial control. I definitely didn't have financial freedom. Unfortunately, I was a, I was a highly educated individual who was, you know, I think very effective in the organization. However, I, that wasn't giving me what I needed. And I started questioning things. I'm like, man, is this really what most people accept? Is this okay? And I was a little bit rebellious. Maybe that was just kind of a little bit of my personality growing up. I was in trouble, you know, a few times growing up and, you know, not, for nothing crazy, but, you know, mm -hmm. just a little bit disagreeable. Mm -hmm. And so I think that really served me in this position. So when I was like, you know what? are people okay with this? I started to question that. The first thing I did, Billy, and I think this was a mistake, was I got my resume ready. And I was like, all right, well, I can go to another organization who may treat people differently. You know, I may be able to climb that ladder quicker. And I started to go down that path and do those interviews. And I was like, well, wait a minute, wait, you know, maybe I'm asking the wrong questions. And I think that I was. And what I realized ultimately was that I was never going to gain the control that I wanted through that path. And it was a little bit challenging. It was, it was actually a few years of, man, this doesn't feel good. And, um, this is, I felt like a little bit of a victim, like, man, I, I don't know why anybody didn't tell me this. Um, and so long story short, I decided, you know what, I'm going to find something else. And I was starting to ask people around, like, what else could I do? What else, you know, what else matches my skill set? You mentioned being in sales prior. Um, I was in, you know, I, I kind of always been a natural salesperson and I got in that's, I think this is why you and I just hit it <laughs> off so well. It's like two salespeople that like yeah. probably please shut up. Like we, we both need to shut up. Um, so as I did that, I, I went and I got my real estate license and I said, you know what? I'm going to sell real estate. I didn't know anything about real estate. I bought a house, but that's all mm -hmm. I knew. And so long story short, I got kind of connected into the real estate space. I got referred to a group that owned a tremendous amount of commercial real estate and they needed a hustler. They needed someone who was going to roll up their sleeves and sell a lot of properties for them because they had some challenging properties and they, they had a vision for where they wanted to go with their organization. I didn't know anything about it, but they needed someone who was going to hustle, who was going to show properties, who were going to negotiate for them. And I learned like in the trenches, um, I learned in the trenches in that space. And then as I grew, you know, I, I found this amazing little book and it's called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm like, wait a minute, uh, I'm selling these things. Like, what am I doing? I'm still trading time for dollars. So it was like, I made one leap and then I needed to make another leap. And so it took me a little while before I started to own assets rather than liabilities and, you know, you know, trade my time for dollars. Yep. But those were some of the key points that kind of put me where I am and on the path that I am today. So it's been an interesting journey. So, you know, from the conversation that we started and you're talking about your children smiling at you to having gone through a number of different life events, recognizing that you were looking for more control, you weren't feeling the financial freedom, you were working, doing all the things that people that want to aspire within large organizations are doing at the same time you're overworked you're working much more probably than most of your colleagues but then they have this misperception of you because you come in two or three minutes later than they did on the specific day right but at the same time you've had all of these life experiences it sounded like you started to get even clearer in terms of what you wanted to do there was one thing that you said in the very beginning, and I, and I want to make sure that everybody in the Going Along family heard what you said, because you said that you, as you were a corporate exec, that you were interested in the psychology of business. You didn't say that you were interested in business. And I really would love for you to talk about that, because I don't think that that's something that happens early on in, the, in most people's career. But if you could maybe tell us a little bit more about what it was specifically that you thought about the psychology of business. So my perception at that point in time was like the psychology of big marketing, because it was like, well, why do people associate value to a certain brand or why do they believe a certain brand is higher, more premium or whatever? And so to me, it was like endlessly fascinating because it's like, wait a minute, a color can communicate trust, like, you know, the color blue can communicate trust or, you know, um, you know, the color red can communicate other things like volatility or passion, you know, many different things. And so to me, it was like, wow, there's like this labyrinth of amazing thoughts. But what happened actually, you know, when I look back from then 
from now to then, you know, the psychology of business and the psychology of really human beings. I mean, that's it's yeah. Marketing is one aspect, but of course, when you think about sales, when you think about building relationships, when you think about influence, when you think about negotiation, all these beautiful things that we step into, especially in the real estate business, you know, it's really about the psychology of human beings. And, you know, business is obviously a function that, you know, move society forward, but the psychology of business and, you know, the psychology of this, I believe mass psychosis in many regards in corporate America. Well, you know, where it's like, Hey, you know, pay your dues, sit in the seat for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years before then you are, you know, a manager or you are (laughs) then maybe a director. And it's like, wait a minute, do we have to wait that long? And I, I actually really do think back and I'm like, man, if I would have stuck around, where would I be now? Where would my life be now? And, and again, you know, I think about the first thing I wanted to say there is where would my financial life be now if I would have stayed in that position? And I think it would be vastly different because, you know, one thing that I've learned in becoming a real estate entrepreneur is that, you know, we can believe that, Hey, you know, it's, we need to pay our dues and we need to do this for 10 years before we get to the next level. Or we can believe that we can timeline hop that we can hop and we can skip a decade, we can skip two decades. And so I think the psychology of it, it comes down to, well, what do we believe? What what do we believe is possible? And what is our frame of the world? That's one of the things why I love talking about mindset, mind expansion, personal development, because it comes down to, well, what do we believe is possible? And then how does that influence the way that we behave, the way that we act, the way that we interact with our environment? And you know, if we don't believe that something's possible, well, then we're probably not even gonna try. Right. So that's kind of the basis. But then it goes to, well, you know, when it gets hard, what type of conversation are we having with ourselves? Is it, hey, you know, I I shouldn't do this because this is outside of my expertise or, you know, I should have paid 10 more years of dues before I got in this position? Or do we believe in our resourcefulness, our infinite creativity? and our ability to do whatever it takes, you know? So I kind of took your question from, from many different regards, but I think the psychology is so fascinating. Well, the the psychology absolutely is fascinating. And then where you help us to understand is when you're applying just the the different colors, if you're looking red, if you're looking blue, and then you, you take that from there to also understanding how can you apply that to the world that you are a part of and how does that then start to affect the way that you are thinking and more importantly, the questions that you're asking yourself. And as you know very well, the, 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 the better questions you ask, then that means you're going to get better responses. And because that then helps to once again, elevate the way that you think, elevate the way that you perceive the world and the way that you are able to move forward. So there's a couple of things that you also mentioned because you have this international experience, this, this really counselor like focus. And in everything that you did, you talked about being able to distinguish and add value in brand. And then there are a couple of things that you also mentioned that some people would think could be contrarian, but I think it comes down to mindset. And one of the things that we love to talk about or we love to learn from here in the Going Long podcast, as you know, Tyler, I live in Europe and I've been investing exclusively in the United States for the last, well, nine, 10 years. But what this is done. A lot of times people say, well, how you can't, how you, you can't do that because you're, you know, eight, 9,000 kilometers or miles away. And the reality is it comes down to the questions that you're asking yourself, like, how can I go about doing this? Because when you want something bad enough, you're willing to do the work. And, and you talked about, you got into real estate just because you, you wanted to get into real estate and there wasn't a, a life path there, but that's what you selected. Um, But then you also, I happen to know that you're not just investing in one particular place. And a lot of times, Tyler, people would say, well, hang on a second. You can only invest in the like three streets down because you have to be a landlord and you have to be able to do that and see it every day. Well, when you start to elevate the way that you think about things and look at the world, it can potentially give you the opportunity to go beyond your backyard, which is one of the things that we like to talk about here. So I'm just curious if you could share with us what was it that gave you the uh, the strength, I guess is probably the word, to consider even investing in a place where you couldn't just walk literally down the street? Well, there's this amazing guy, his name is Tony Robbins. And he says, um, you know, success leaves clues. And ultimately, we don't have to recreate the wheel. You know, there's this guy uh, also that maybe some of your listeners have heard of. His name is Elon Musk. This guy is building rockets. He's taking humanity to Mars. He's buying Twitter. I mean, what all, all these crazy things. And so 
Elon Musk is recreating the wheel in many regards, right? And so we all admire him. I think many, many entrepreneurs admire what, what Elon Musk has done and what he continues to do. But in our space, we're not recreating the wheel. And so I think of Tony Robbins and I say, well, if success leaves clues, you know, each and every day is a new opportunity for me to grow and become the next version of myself. I started investing in real estate in my own backyard. The first deal I ever bought was an eight unit property. It was probably 20 minutes away from my house. And yeah, I mean, I could say that that's long. It wasn't on my street, you know, but, but I still, I was a landlord. I was managing that property. I was doing the thing. And as I learned, it was like, wait a minute, you know, I made a ton of mistakes and it was because of lack of systems. It was because of lack of team. And when I started to recognize and open my gaze, open my perspective to say, all right, if that's the case, and if there's more out there and if, everyone else or not everyone else, but many of my most successful clients, you know, I was a, I was a real estate broker at one point in time. Most of my most successful clients were either not local or they were international. I mean, literally international. I'm like, well, how are they doing it? And they're buying tens of millions of dollars of property and they're all, you know, front page news and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, how are they doing it? And so again, it's modeling that success. It's asking questions. It's recognizing that it's not about you doing it all. You know, there's also this beautiful book. It's called Who Not How, right? Oh, yeah. It's about building a team. It's about surrounding yourself with people who have your best interest and recognizing that at any point in time, you've got to make changes on that team. And so for me, as I grew, you know, the first ability for, or the first step into investing long distance for me was being a limited partner. You know, I, I invested in a deal in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm still invested in it by the way. And I received cash flow on a day on a monthly basis. And I was going to say a daily basis. That would be amazing. <laughs> uh, and so that was my first thing. And obviously who I invested with, they were investing, you know, long distance as well. And so I learned from them. I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. And then what I found from there was that, you know, we could do this. We could provide opportunities for others as well. And we invest across the Midwest and the Southeast. And we have investors across the United States internationally. And it's it's amazing. And so together we can all win. It's this it's the abundance mindset. You know, I think the limited, the scarce mindset says, I must do it all. It must be next to me. I must be able to see this constantly. But the abundance mindset says anything is possible. The question that you ask is like, well, you know, I can't do that. Well, the first thought is I can't do that. The second thought is, well, how can I do that? Excellent. You know, I love that question. Robert Kiyosaki says, instead of I can't afford that, it's how can I afford that? But if you apply that to anything else, that's when you put yourself, what I would say, in the world of possibilities. And it doesn't mean that it's it's a hundred percent likely. It means that you are in the game. You know, you and I love basketball. The only way that you're going to win the game is if you step on the court, right? So we got to step on the court. And I think asking those type of powerful questions is what puts us in the game of the world of possibilities. So as you enter into this game in the world of possibilities, doing things differently, surrounding yourselves with others, most importantly, as you said, success leaves clues. So the question is, are you surrounding yourself with those who are doing the things that you want to do? Are you gaining the experience that you would like to have that's going to help you become the best version of yourself or the next version of yourself so that you can ultimately get to whatever outcomes that you're looking to, to, to achieve? It's, go, go ahead. Did you want to add something else? No, I was just going to say that anytime you are, anytime you meet someone new, you know, well, at least this is how I think about it. It's like anything is possible with this human being. You know, what, what is possible together? And it's not like I go into it having these high expectations, but it's just being lighthearted and recognizing that, you know, anybody who I surround myself with, I can add value to, and they may be able to add value to me. And it's not that I expect that or that I require that, but to me, it, may, it makes life exciting. It, it puts us in this adventure, adventuresome life. I love people, man. I'm a very big, I'm a people person yeah. and being with others and having that sort of thought process in the back of my mind, it says, well, wait a minute, what, what could we do together? You know, what mm -hmm. type of deals could we do together? Or, you know, what type of uh, future could we unlock as a result of this relationship? So anyway, that was just a thought that came to my no, mind. Yeah. I mean, in the, because it is, as you're thinking about how do you develop relationships? How do you find out the, the where are the points of interest? Where are the points of connection? That That is a, a natural curiosity, right? Really hope you're enjoying today's conversation. And once again, if you're an accredited investor and you are tired of getting crushed by your W-2 taxes, and you're looking for a new way to gain more control over your freedom to choose, go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest. 
Once again, that's firstgencp.com forward slash invest. Now let's get back to today's conversation. You've also had loads of experience. You talked about the, the, the nationwide experience in the U.S. You talked about international experience and uh, working with, with people from different backgrounds, different cultures, different languages. You've talked about being in a, um, a high paid professional role. You've also talked about being aware of the things that you wanted and didn't want to do, uh, i.e. you didn't want to just wait on someone else to tell you when you could be promoted. You wanted to be able to create those things. But if you could talk to that person who is today, that's a hard paid professional that's in the role and they're thinking, wow, man, all these things that Tyler's saying, like, it's really, really, I can relate to all the kinds of things that he said. However, that person is still afraid to take action to get in the game, as you just talked about. What, what do you say to that person or, or how do you help that person gain the clarity so that they can, in fact, have the power to decide what they want to do and then act upon that? Well, one thing I'll say is that I don't want to be seen as a sage on the stage. You know, it's I don't have every answer for every human being. And I think that that's something that needs to be said for those people who are listening to say, hey, you know, I don't have this, 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 comprehensive playbook that has every single one of your answers. But what I do have is the ability to ask questions. And mm -hmm. if I were to be sitting down with any of those individuals, I would say, well, what is it that's most important to you? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I would ask that is because that puts us in the world of possibilities to understand outcomes. Instead of being task focused, let's be outcome focused. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I know that we focus on with real estate is financial freedom and the ability that it gives us to make decisions in our life and to design our life. And so what I would ask those individuals is, do, are you living the life that you want to live? And if not, you know, what life do you want to live? And if anything were possible, what would that look like? And so it's starting there, starting with the end in mind, starting to recognize, well, what is it that you, where do you want to live? What do you want to do? What type of things you want to experience? Who do you want to be in a relationship with? What things do you want to learn? What type of person do you want to be? And then we reverse engineer it from there. And everybody's answers are going to be different. Right. And, you know, you may say, well, you know, I want this, that and the other. And I may say, well, you probably shouldn't do multifamily real estate because that's not going to get you what you want. Or you probably shouldn't do self storage or you probably shouldn't do retail. You know, maybe. I mean, those are just some avenues that we would go down. But I think those are some of the questions that I would ask. And I think the other thing, too, is that one thing that I would want one, one idea that really changed my life was that it's never and this is again this is a tony robbins thought it's never a matter of your resources but it's always a matter of your resourcefulness and so when you think about those outcomes it's how committed are you to those outcomes because there's two different sides of the fence you're either committed you're willing to do whatever it takes or you're interested and that sounds really good that sounds really nice you know that that would be really nice if i had that type of lifestyle and when it gets inconvenient you say, well, you know, that would have been nice, but I'm not willing to do that. So the question for you is, what would it look like if you were committed? What would it look like if you were willing to do whatever it takes? And so I think once you connect to what is truly your essence, what is, you know, in alignment with your purpose and, and what you were designed to do, you start to unlock that commitment and you start to overcome those obstacles. You blast through the brick wall, you climb above it, you go under it, you tunnel through it, whatever you need to do, because there's always a solution and it's about your resourcefulness. What are you willing to do? Who are you willing to ask? What skills are you willing to obtain? And, you know, what type of habits, routines, um, you know, daily rituals are you willing to engage in to become that version of yourself that has the ability to go through those obstacles? So th those are a few of the things that I would say. So, and, and this is the, this is the beauty of it, right? And this is one of the reasons that you continue to go out and positively impact so many lives on so many different levels, Tyler, because it is about how can you help the person to ask the question of themselves? And once they understand the answer, like you are, you are listening rather than Tyler saying, Hey, look, this is the way you do it. It's helping you to understand, unlock what you have, the, the feelings that you have inside, not only what you want to be able to do, more importantly, why you want to be able to do it. Because to your point, Tyler, there will be, it's not if they things get challenging, things will get challenging. And it's at that point, what are you willing to do in order to make sure that you're still driving towards the outcome that you're looking for, for your life, for your family's life, so that you can feel and, and be, be fulfilled um, and, and be able to move forward. So just, I, I love the way you frame that. And I want the going long family to really understand and listen to the power of not just giving an answer, but more importantly, asking the right question, 
because that is ultimately what will help you put you on the path to, uh, to becoming. And one so, thing I'll add to that is please, be, please. be, be resolute in your outcome, but flexible in your approach, you know, because along the path, there's going to be new information that you obtain. There's going to be a new market cycle. There's going to be new relationships and be flexible, be flexible in your approach, but resolute in your outcome. So once you've defined that commitment, once you've defined that vision, be committed and remain resolute in that outcome. But along the way, you're going to course correct. You're going to change. You're going to become something different. You're going to change your strategy. Um, but I think that that's, that's an important path because it's a long game. You know, you, you talk about your podcast is going long. Um, this is a long game. It's a long business. And these relationships are long, they're, they're, they're long relationships because, you know, there's a difference in, in transactional relationships and transformational relationships. What we have right here, this is transformational. Like I'm becoming yeah. something different as a result of the amazing energy that you bring. I think hopefully I've rubbed a little bit. Good yes, ways no, a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go on record a lot. Yes, definitely uh, transformational. Sorry, keep, keep going. No, that's it. I mean, it's just, to me, it's very exciting, but, but as we, keep that focus on where we're going and recognize that, Hey, if we give, if we add more value to other people, that's how we get there. You know, it's like, it's not about a zero sum game. It's not about you. I win, you lose. It's about, we both win. And that's a beautiful thing about real estate is that we can do that. We can create more value as a result of giving as a result of sharing. And that's amazing. I mean, that's, that's the beauty of like syndication as an example, when you invest in our deals, we all win and, and we can, we can allow our residents to win as well. Yeah. And so this is the, this is one of those things. And I think maybe you and I've talked about this before, but I, it's one of the things that I personally have struggled with. I'm, I'm very aware of having a, because a background come from a very scarcity minded place, not out of any, any wrongdoing, but just because the way that my parents grew up, they didn't have very much. So everything that they wanted to hold on to. And so as you are aware of these things, and then you realize that the, the real way of being able to win together is being much more abundant, giving more than you're asking to receive, because in doing that, not only are you helping others, but you're continuing to move and grow together. So when I hear you, when I, when I hear you manifest that, it's just another example of how by working together and sharing, uh, everyone's able to move forward and usually moves forward further and faster uh, together. The, one of the other things that I wanted to, to draw on, um, because I know that you spend an enormous amount of time really around the mindset and the mindset expansion. And, and we're talking about that now. It's something I personally love and want to and will spend more time on. I've spent a lot of time uh, really getting in touch with myself and understanding uh, more about the way that I work and my mind works. But maybe you could help us understand the importance, at least in your experience of how, especially when it comes to investing, it's not, in my opinion, just about the dollars and cents. It has to be tied to something at a higher level. You touched on a little bit before, but maybe you could help the going long family understand a bit more about the the importance of the right mindset in terms of being able to get successful outcomes as it relates to investing, whether that be energy, your time, your 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 focus, uh, or your finances. So let's think about it this way: you and I both love basketball, right? And so yeah. let's 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 just frame it because actually someone shared this with me on my podcast, and I was like, wow, that's a phenomenal way to put it. If you and I, and I, I would think maybe we could, we could shoot some hoops. You know, if, if you yeah, and I maybe. just said, you know what, I am going to be the best basketball player in the world. And I got out on the court with LeBron James, it would not end well. You know, that, <laughs> that, that mindset is not going to translate into skills and effectiveness on the court. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's just, let's just frame that. So mindset can be very powerful, but it is not everything. You can't just stack a powerful mindset on top of no skills, no strategy, um, no network, no knowledge, um, you know, no experience, no wisdom. You can't do that now. But if you stack on top of education, if you stack on top of a network, when you stack on top of, you know, an, an abundance, you know, I think we're talking about mindset, but I'm thinking when you, when you think about the fact that, Hey, you know what? I can always grow. I can always learn. And even if I lose, I win because, you know, there's, there's this amazing thing called experience that I gain. And so when I think about mindset, 
you know, you have to start with this foundation of understanding. And really, you know, I think about 101, like in commercial real estate, it's, well, let's understand what's going on across the world. How does the economy work? What, how does business work? How does commerce work? And, and what role does real estate play in that whole thing? And we have to start there and understand, well, what, what are the economics of it? What are the driving forces of occupancy for whatever asset class or all asset classes, you know, we have to start there. And then we start to understand a bit more about, well, how may my investing strategy play in this whole big thing? And then from there, as we go, it's, it comes down to, well, what's our belief? Do we believe that anything is possible? Do we believe that if we take action that we may fail, uh, or we may be embarrassed or we may lose money and you know, what, what may other people think about us? And it's this, under the knee, underneath the surface sort of conversation that we have with ourselves that we have to become aware of, we have to become conscious of. And if we're not conscious of it, well, then we start to act, you know, as our lower self, our lower self thinks that, well, you know, if I try, I might fail. If I try, I might be embarrassed. Um, and, and this is true for all of us. And I think it's this thing that we have from thousands of years ago where, you know what, there was a lion chasing after us. And that really served us at that point in time. The amazing thing that happens is that over thousands and thousands of years, we have really not changed that much. We haven't changed as human beings that much, but our world and our environment has drastically changed. I mean, you and I are having this conversation thousands of miles apart from each yeah. other. Like <laughs> it's like we're sitting at a coffee shop together. And so that's unbelievable. This did not exist. This really didn't exist. What? 10 years ago. I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. it did. I mean, I, I'm sure we could have talked on a phone, but it wouldn't have sounded this great. That's for no, sure. No, 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 definitely not. So, you know, our world has changed drastically, but our hardwiring has not changed drastically. And so we've got to become aware. And one of the things that I think it was Nietzsche who said is like, when you bring the, when you bring the unconscious to the conscious, that's when everything starts to change. Mm -hmm. And so when we understand this voice, we understand the survival mechanism, this reptilian brain, and we recognize that, hey, it's just trying to serve me. But in this circumstance and in these circumstances, it's not serving me. So I can say thank you, but no thank you. And my higher self says, well, what is my outcome? What are my focus? What, what, what good do I want to give to this world? Then we can put ourselves again in the world of possibilities. And with that said, it's about our frame of the world. You know, is our frame narrowly focused to say, I must win. They must lose. I must, you know, own a property next door to me and I must, you know, manage it with this, that, and the other, or is it, Hey, you know what? We have this unbelievably unlimited landscape. We have this unlimited abundance universe, right? And I think about there is just unlimited, there's unlimited money. There's unlimited um, resources. There's unlimited relationships. There's unlimited opportunities. That's the difference in saying, well, you know what? Well, wait a minute. There's only this amount of, you know, wait, you know, look at oil. You know, we're going to run out of oil at some point in the near future. <laughs> there was somebody who said, well, what if we started uh, mining asteroids? And it's like, Oh my, oh, are you serious? Yeah, right. So yeah, we look at the problem in a different way. And so what happens is when we start thinking about, well, wait a minute, if that is possible, then what else could be possible? Cause we think of all these limited resources. We think about mm -hmm. limited time. How do we think about time? You know, is it, we have 168 hours in a week or wait a minute, who created time? Who created hours? Right. right? Yeah. And so I could go down a tremendous amount of paths with this, but when I think about mindset, it, it, it really is everything. I think about one example. There was a, a few years ago, I was, um, I was trying to come up in this business. I was trying to grow my portfolio and there was a broker who had a great deal. It was a 36 unit deal. And I was like, you know, but you know, he's probably already sold it. He's probably already got somebody who's, who's buying this deal and I don't need to call him. And, and I remember I called him, I left him a voicemail. I didn't hear back from him. And I'm like, man, he's got it done. It's, it's already over. But I was start starting to learn about this mindset thing. And it's like, well, is this a story? Is this a story that I'm telling myself that's limiting me or is it serving me? And I was like, well, it probably is limiting me. So why don't I try to call him again? call him again. And he's like, man, I'm so sorry. I meant to call you back. That deal is still available. You want to go take a look at it this afternoon? I'm like, absolutely. Let's do it. And I get there and he's like, man, I'm so glad that you called. I really want to do this deal with you. You want to buy it. It turned out to be an unbelievable deal. 
unbelievable deal. And if I didn't have the, the, the conversation with myself was if, is this holding me back? Is this limiting me? Or is this serving me? I would have never called him back. And I'm telling you that it's not about money, of course, but that was a very profitable deal. So these things compound in a huge way. Yeah. And so when you see this compound effect that, that is happening, it really, once again, brings you back to, you know, kind of the root of the question, which was really understanding what, what kind of, what are the driving forces? You, you have the awareness, you have the, 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 the belief, and then you have the consciousness and then taking action on that. And so to be able to walk us through how any type of decision that you want to make, sometimes you can limit yourself and it's, and it's about making sure that you are aware of what's happening. You have the belief system and, and you start to absolutely go out and take action. Um, sorry, go ahead. You, you wanted to build on that. No, it's just, I mean, so when, when we, when we find that space, there is power, right? When there's between stimulus and response, there's this space. And so a lot of times the stimulus gives us this inner dialogue that we may or may not be aware of. But once we start to identify that space and we start to observe it, instead of saying, I am that thought, or I am that belief, or I am that whatever, now we can look at it and say, wow, where did, I wonder where that came from. Did that come from my parents? Did that come from the media? Did that come from uh, someone, you know, a peer that I spent a lot of time with growing up or maybe some somebody that I still spend a lot of time with now? Where did that thought come from? Because once we start to disidentify with those thoughts that are limiting us, we can say, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what the opposite would be. And then, wow, what happens then? Yeah, these are just... Yeah, these are these are concepts that I want the going long family to to dive in more. Uh, I, you know, as we're talking, I'm I'm coming back to one of the very first things that I was asking you is just when you talked about the psychology of business, and when I think about the interactions that the going long family is having that the going long family is having with you now that I've had with you previously in other conversations, and I think about the the the, the brand that you continue to build, right? And whether we're talking about your personal brand, right? Where people can t check you out at tylerchester.com, uh, whether we're talking about how you're adding value uh, through bringing people together and being able to invest common goals, common, uh, common ideas through CCF Capital, uh, or we think about what you're doing with your podcast and people can go there at elevatepod.com, which is the Elevate podcast, right? And when you think about any of these three, like publicly external visible type of brands, if you will, they're brands that scream uh, high standard, brands that scream, uh, we want to know you more, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I talk about those three and I'm sure by the end of the show, you'll get a chance to tell us more about that. But I am also really interested in you just sharing kind of the genesis before we get into the going long final three, Tyler, the, the genesis of Elevate. Uh, because what I see you doing consistently, what I hear you talking about consistently is, is just a way that I believe can help to, and very appropriately named, elevate anyone's way of thinking, doing, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe just talk to us uh, a little bit about the, uh, the, the genesis of the Elevate podcast. So one of the things that I learned in real estate was that, wow, it was like, it, originally it was like, man, I felt like I was pushing this massive boulder up this hill. It was like, oh my gosh, I have so much to learn. And like, what if I make the wrong step? I'm going to lose thousands of dollars. And then, you know, maybe I'll go bankrupt. It was like, oh, this is so <laughs> stressful. And it was like, because I changed from being an employee to being an entrepreneur and investor. And it was a vastly different world. And in that world, it was like, all right, I need every piece of knowledge, every piece of information that I can to just give myself as much of an advantage as, as, as possible, because, you know, I didn't have that network. I, you know, I stepped into this kind of from scratch and what I learned was the next version of myself is always available. There is another level always. And the way that I was able to survive and thrive was through personal development. It was through learning. It was through growing. It was through asking bigger questions. It was through unlocking a new possibility through my mind and through the minds of others and, you know, leveraging other people's experience and building a team and being a leader and, and just learning and growing. And so, you know, it was certainly about understanding and optimizing my strategy, but it was more so about who I was becoming. And I, I've become a big believer that our success follows our personal development. 
And so that's why I created Elevate. It's to share that, to expand in that. I learn as much as anybody does in that, you know, and, and I ask questions and I'm sure you do too, Billy. It's like, I want to know this. How did you do that? You know, what is it that you think and what is it that you have unlocked? And I've learned that there truly always is another level. You know, people that we admire deeply are the ones who are the most humble. They're the most willing to change. They're the most willing to adapt and grow. And to me, that's a pattern. That is uh, that is an absolute corollary to their success. And so I've just tried to, you know, continue to be humble and ask questions and and put myself in a position where I can learn in public. And to me, it's like, you know, it's a little bit there's a little bit of pressure because I kind of put myself out on a limb and show, show people that, hey, I don't have all the answers. I don't know everything. And, yeah, I stumble on my words and I say the wrong thing from time to time. But there's always something to learn. There's always something to grow. And to me, that's more fulfilling than anything. I mean, I think financial freedom is amazing and we all need it. And we all should have it in every Everybody is entitled to their own personal, um, you know, financial freedom if they put in the work, if they show commitment. But ultimately, that's just the basis. You know, the real fulfillment in life is about growth. It's about contribution. It's about love. It's about um, excitement. It's about, you know, variability. It's about traveling the world. It's about meeting amazing people. And it's about learning about their stories. So that's why I created Elevate. And I just want to live that life forever, man. That's that's my life. That's it, That's what I love. Yeah. And so you definitely love it it comes through, you can feel it. And if you would just allow me to very slightly modify one of the things that you just said, because the beauty about what you're doing, Tyler, is that you're not trying, you're actually doing. And that's <laughs> the beauty. And, and it doesn't, things don't need to be perfect. Things need to continue to move so that you can become the best version of yourself. So just in a very kind way, I want to correct what you said, because you are definitely not trying, you are doing, which is one of the main reasons that you continue to go out and positively affect so many lives around the globe. So, um, you know, with that, Tyler, I like, I can't believe these conversations <laughs> oh, go I'm by. I'm crying, I'm crying. Like, they just go by like super fast. Like I'm very excited because I know that I get to keep talking to you and the Going Long family, I know they're going to be sending me emails and, and all this kind of, Billy, you got to get Tyler back on the show. Like, we'll, right, do we'll do it again, no gonna, worries. <laughs> <laughs> all right, sounds good. Well, listen, the thing is, we've got to get into the Going Long final three. But the thing is, I never ask any questions of going along final three of a guest. And today you're our special guest without you telling me that you are ready for me to ask. So are you ready? I'm ready. Let's rock. You were born ready. I mean, what, <laughs> what, I don't even know why I asked the question, but I just, I kind of had to ask the question, you know. I'm ready for anything with Billy Keels. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> All right. So the, the, the first of the going along final three is we started with you in Kentucky right? Really close to uh, my, my home state. And now I'd like to bring things back to my new adopted side of the pond here in Europe. So Tyler, I would love for you to share with me and the Going Long family, what is your favorite European city that you've either visited or is still on your bucket list to visit? Well, there's many that are still on my bucket list, but Rome is my favorite. I mean, Rome is such a special place. You know, I'm sitting here drinking my coffee and I'm like, there's no place that matches the coffee in Rome. And of course, the wine and the pasta and the views and the history and just like the culture. I mean, like Italy is phenomenal. And, and I'm sorry, Barcelona. I love, you know, I actually haven't been to Barcelona, so I got to come visit you. But well, there's okay, so many that are on the bucket list. All right. Well, that that's awesome. Rome is there. We've got a lot of listeners in, in Italy as well. So I'm sure that they'll be going, well, why didn't you say Milan? Or why didn't you say Cagliari or whatever? So, but uh, perfect. So, so Rome it is, and that will be in the show notes. And here's the, the, the second question I have, Tyler, and this is really has a lot to do with, I've been very, very fortunate, right? Met a lot of people who I consider to be extremely successful uh, for the different impacts that they've made. And I consider you also someone who's extremely successful and continues to, to make a positive impact. And, and the thing is, um, hopefully you agree. Like one of the things that happens with really, really successful people is one of the main reasons that they're successful is because they, unlike most people, like when they put their plan together, like they put it together and they get it right the first time. And then after they get it right, they continue to, oh man, I can't believe I did that. Um, that's a joke. Anyway, <laughs> that's with me and the Going Long family. It's our little joke. He's thinking, what? Billy, did you just say that, man? That can't be me. I'm like, this is a show, man. This is what he does. Let him go. <laughs> no, it's a joke. It's a joke. So everybody in the Going Long family, whether they're running or they're cooking or whatever, they're kind of laughing now, but they know this. They know the joke. So the, here's the reality, right? Nobody is perfect. And the, re, the real, real reality, this is no joke, is 
that people that are successful, they, unlike most people, they probably make 20 to 50 times more mistakes than anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. But they do do one thing very, very differently. And I, I hope that you agree with this. The thing that they do differently, Tyler, is every single time that there is a relevant learning opportunity, mistake, however you want to call it, they stop. They learn from that opportunity or that mistake. And every single time, without a doubt, they make sure that they put different strategies, tactics, and actions in place to minimize the probability of that exact same thing happening again. So if you can think about not the learning opportunity or the mistake, but Tyler, if you can think about that one lesson, that one lesson that you know the Going Long family needs to hear today to help them to continue to move forward and minimize the probability of a major mistake happening, what would that one piece of advice be that you would pay forward today? For me, you know, one of the things that I've learned is that, you know, I don't have all the answers. Um, I don't, I, you know, I, I love to grow as a, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, um, as a father, all these things, but it comes down to who are you surrounding yourself with? And at any moment in time, we have to continue to evaluate our team, lead our team, coach them up, um, give them the tools, the resources that they need to succeed. But there are certainly times, unfortunately, where we have to make changes on our team. And I think one of the biggest things that I've learned is that we've we've got to be willing to make changes, even when it's inconvenient, it's it's challenging, maybe it's disruptive for a short period of time. Um, but in the grander scheme, it's always about continuing to grow, do the right things for other people. Um, so that that's the biggest thing, especially for people who are investing long distance and, you know, for the long haul is that it, it's all about your team. And so being willing to evaluate, give that, you know, give your team what they need to succeed, ask them questions about, Hey, what's going on in your life? What is it that you really want to accomplish so that we are on the same page? But if somebody is not up to the snuff, then be willing to make that change. So I think that that's probably one of the biggest things. And it's something that I have to tell myself right now, because I've, I've, I'm thinking of two team members. It's like, we're probably going to have to coach them out, unfortunately. And so, you know, I think that that's a big lesson. I mean, there's so many to your point. Yeah. Um, I think failure is feedback and, yeah. and it, some people would say, well, it's fatal, you know, but, but you're never out of the game as, as long as you're willing to get yourself up off the mat. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And being able to make and surround yourself with those individuals that are going to help to continue to help you level up and, also having the heart and the transparency that when that change needs to happen, you're also there and ready to make the, make the changes. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. And I, I, I don't even kind of want to ask you the last question because I just want to keep talking to you forever. <laughs> but, um, but, but here's the thing. So love being able to share knowledge uh, with the Going Long family. And you've helped share so many nuggets today. Uh, but what is the one book that you would recommend to the Going Long family today? Yeah, I was telling you before we started that I was like, man, that's going to be a hard one because I'm like, <laughs> I love reading and I see your beautiful bookshelf behind you. And we obviously share yeah, yeah. just a, just this endless, qu you know, quest for mm -hmm. knowledge and learning and growth. Yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking about our conversation today and there is a book that I read and it's by a man named Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book and it's called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And it's a game changer. It helps us understand that we can become addicted to our emotions. And most of the time we do become addicted to our emotions, which then become patterns, which becomes our personality, which becomes behavior, which then becomes our results in our reality. And of course, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, he is, he is a doctor, but he's also someone who's very in tune with quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and, and what he calls the quantum field. And I think if you want to make big leaps, if you want to make massive changes, if you want to do big things, it starts with understanding, well, what are the habits that we have of being ourselves, and how can we break those? And so that is a phenomenal book. And anybody who's an investor, a human being, an entrepreneur, whatever you are, um, this is a game changer and it can change your life. So definitely recommend that book. All right. Break the ha breaking the habit of being yourself. Appreciate that. And um, yeah, Tyler, I just, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about uh, just your, your early experiences, your, your direct sales, your, your also recognizing that, hey, listen, you were 
built for a certain type of role. You had the self-awareness to then say, hey, listen, I want to do something different. And you you got into the real estate space. And and from there, you continued to grow. And you um, also had this dream of, you know, this this idea of understanding the, the psychology uh, of business, which I just think is absolutely brilliant and being able to not only take that in at an early age, but then being able to internalize that and through all of the different things that you have done, working with people across the U.S., across the nation, um, being a high performer in your role uh, when you were in the corporate world, now continuing to take that to another level, looking at your your own brand, looking at the way that you're working and helping people through CCF Capital and also through your Elevate podcast. So many different ways that you are impacting people's lives. Um I know these are just some of the things that the going long family is thinking, oh my gosh, Billy, just get to the point. Just get to the <laughs> point, right? Which is, I know that I'm going to get the chance to talk to you again, but so many people are thinking to themselves, how can I get in touch with Tyler? How can I find out more about what he's doing? So could you help me and the rest of the going long family uh, understand what's the best way to contact you or find out more about what you're doing or what your teams are doing? Well, the first thing I would say is go listen to episode 253 of Elevate with Billy Keels. Um, you know, if you're listening to podcasts, is a great way for for us to continue the dialogue together is for you to, you know, take a take a gander at what we're doing with Elevate. So, of course, we're, we're available in anywhere that the listeners listen to podcasts. So just go check out Elevate with Tyler Chesser. It's the real estate investing podcast for mindset, mind expansion, and personal development. So that's a really easy one. Of course, elevatepod.com. If you want to go check out, we have a total, we have tons of resources courses, show notes, transcripts. I mean, you name it, that's all there. Um, so that's a great way for people to build a relationship with me, um, you know, easily and just on their own time. And we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of episodes with individuals like yourself, Billy, and some incredible human beings across the world. Um, that's one place. Of course, you can go to cfcapllc.com. We buy multifamily real estate across the Midwest and the Southeast, and we invite accredited investors to invest alongside our team. And so, you know, we we provide what we believe are outsized returns, mitigated risk, tax optimization, all of these beautiful things. And of course, you know, our investors are from everywhere, and they're some of the most amazing people in the world. Our philosophy is elevating communities together. If anybody is if anybody is watching um, this podcast, uh, you know, on the, on the video, you can see I'm holding up my coffee cup and it says elevating communities together. And we try to um, bring all of these concepts together to say, all right, well, what does that really mean? It means that we can improve the lives of our residents. We can improve the lives of our staff. We can improve the lives of our investors. We can improve the communities surrounding the communities that we invest in. And we can live this abundance mindset. Um, we can also enhance the return on investment and we can create an amazing life. We can make an impact and an income. So if anybody wants to learn more about that, just go to cfcapllc.com. But man, I'm just, I'm just blown away. You are a superstar. And I'm like, I get to be a friends with a superstar. <laughs> so how does that feel to you, Billy? You know, I'm just, uh, I'm blessed that you're in my life, man. And I really, really am thankful that you decided to invest your time with me and the entire Going Long family today, uh, Tyler. I just, so I, just, I do want to thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Uh, as you say, I, I would like to acknowledge you as well for just all the wonderful, fantastic, positively impactful things that you are doing on communities and also individuals and helping them to to level up and, and be the best versions of themselves. So thank you very much for uh, for investing your time with us today, man. Appreciate you. Billy, it's been absolutely my pleasure. I cannot wait to continue our friendship. And thanks again for having me. Likewise, man. If you give me like 15 seconds, I just want to say the last words to the Going Long family. And listen, I mean, listen, everybody, what, what else can I say? I mean, Tyler left it all here on the floor. The mic just dropped. We're done, <laughs> right? We're heading out. But, but most importantly, take today's conversation because I know he left so many different nuggets. Take the conversation, share it with your family, share it with your friends, talk about the different concepts that, that Tyler's talked about today. Um, and while you're doing that, I will be working furiously and, and waiting for you on the very next conversation. So until then, go out and make it a great day. And thank you very, very much. Once again, today's conversation was sponsored by First Generation Capital Partners. If you want to find out more, go to firstgencp.com forward slash invest.